preserved for our walk in this world. They resound. It's been an interesting few days. It's been interesting coming to the building and just a few people being here. As Will said in his devotion on Wednesday night, you know, Wednesday night the chairs were empty. Sunday morning, the chairs are going to be empty. Last Sunday, the chairs were empty. They're empty in classes, they're empty in the auditorium, they're empty on Sunday morning, they're empty on Sunday night, they're empty on Wednesday. Yes, there are people milling about the building, there are people doing the things that need to be done, Barbara taking care of the things that, that need to be taken care of, Will and I taking care of the things for Tide for Christ and for the church, and, and Thomas working from home doing things for, for the youth and then also on his other job. We see all these things and, and Janice coming here to water the flowers and our cleaning crew coming to disinfect, but yet it's still empty. But even in all this emptiness, even, even in all this distancing, we still have a lot to focus on. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 9. Psalm 9. Listen to these words from the psalmist. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and they perish before your presence. You have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy came to an end in everlasting ruin. Their cities you rooted out. And the very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice, and he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprighteousness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. And the psalm continues. And I know that as David writes this psalm, he's talking about physical enemies. He's talking about those nations that are fighting against Israel, those people that are, that are trying to dispose him as king. But at the same time, there's something else in this psalm. It is a psalm of gratitude. Look again at the first verse. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Gratitude. Someone said, in order to express gratitude, you must first be humble. That humility leads to gratitude. But the reverse is also true. Gratitude teaches us humility. When I realize everything that God has done and everything that God is, and I thank him for it, I realize how little I have to offer. And as I realize how little I have to offer, the more I thank him for everything that he has and everything that he does. You know, during our current crisis, I don't know what else to call it, during our current crisis, it can, be, it can feel like that proverbial rug has been yanked out from under you. And when the rug is yanked out from under you, you sometimes land flat on your back. But it's from that perspective that we look up and we see that God is still there. From that vantage point, we know that God is still there. Look again at verses 9 and 10 of the psalm. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you, Father, for caring for us. Father, we thank you for all those that are still working, all those who are working for, for us, from the healthcare workers, from the, the janitors in the hospitals and the janitors in the buildings, the, to the doctors, the nurses, the respiratory therapists, all those that are taking care of those who are sick. Father, we thank you for the truck drivers that are delivering our goods. We thank you for those that are delivering our mail. We thank you for those that are working in the grocery stores and, and trying to make the restaurants work. Father, we thank you for families who have 
gathered around each other to care for each other. Father, we thank you for our communities where even though we're trying to maintain a safe distance, we are still being friendly and kind. Father, we're thankful that during these times, the best of us comes out, that we show our love and our compassion and our care. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for being our stronghold. Thank you for being you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. And until then, may God bless your life.